Hmm. Where's the rest of you? No, your eyes are not deceiving you, this is what the guitar looks like and it's a Traveler guitar, a Hofner Shorty Deluxe Traveler. This is gonna be a short review, no pun intended, I just had 2 hours with this guitar. A customer came in with it for a setup, string change and I just had to do a video. It's the first time I'm trying one of these, even though it's called Shorty, it is the Deluxe, it has 2 pickups, it has the full scale length of 24.7 inches. And it has 24 frets. At first I thought this guitar is gonna suck, and in a way it does, but not in the way that you think. It's actually a pretty cool guitar, plays amazing, feels great, sounds great, but it has the worst, absolute worst neck dive that I have ever experienced in a guitar. The Hofner company is no joke, and I was right, it is a soft toe, it's pronounced Hofner. Karl Hofner is a German manufacturer of musical instruments with one division that manufactures guitars and basses and another that manufactures string instruments. As I already said, this is a serious company that has been around for 135 years since 1887. One of the most famous instruments and designs to come out of the Hofner factory is the violin bass and a famous user of violin basses is Paul McCartney from the Beatles himself. For this video we are gonna concentrate on the Traveler guitars which are under guitars and basses, solid body guitars. The Hofner Shorty has a lot of different color variations, but mainly two different models. The regular Shorty and the Shorty Deluxe. The regular Shorty has only one pickup, volume and tone knobs, and it's like the <laughs> shortest version of the Deluxe. Then we got the Deluxe that I'm reviewing today, with two pickups and a three-way switch. And you just know that thing is gonna neck dive like crazy when even the official website is suggesting a strap like this with the string at this end to tie it around the nut. The official Hofner website is pretty good actually, here is the description for the Shorty Deluxe and I'm gonna give you some time with the specifications. Here are the body specs, the neck specs, fingerboard, bridge, finish, hardware, a lot of info for this guitar, I'm surprised. That definitely is an unusual guitar, I've already showed you the specs but let's go through them. It has base wood body, maple neck with a bolt on construction. It has black wood fingerboard and 24 frets even though the specs say 22. 24.7 inch scale length. This is called the Hofner VB shaped headstock. It has the Hofner open coil pickups which are actually pretty hot, volume, tone and a 3 way switch. The bridge and tailpiece are all in one. Besides the body it has all the specs that most regular guitars have. This is the shorty without the pick guard, you see the neck connection, the bolt on neck and the wall separating the pickup cavity has cracked or collapsed at some point. I am surprised of the amount of colorways for electronics on this small body. This is what the back of the pick guard looks like, has some shooting tape, volume tone, a 3 way switch and the neck pickup mounted on it, which has a little bit of problem I'm gonna show you later, some Chinese inscription that I don't understand. This is the bridge pickup cavity and I see a sandwich body between base wood back and base wood top. These are the Hofner pickups, as I already mentioned they are pretty hot, open core construction, pickup ring on the bridge, the cable goes to the pick guard. Let's measure just how hot these are, the bridge Hofner is at 11.13, switching over to the neck, 11.11 dead, these are pretty hot for a guitar like that, middle position, 5.68. Hofner are calling this a fixed bridge and tail piece all in one, I'm gonna show you how you string these a little bit later on. It has individual saddles so you can intonate it, these big bolts sticking out of the back push against the poles and adjust it separately. The fingerboard sure looks like rosewood but it's listed as black wood, it is pretty thick piece of wood and there's no binding on the side of it, just white dotting lace. 
The threads need a little bit of polishing, but they're in decent condition. Black molded nut, a Hofner VB shaped headstock, Chinese chrome tuners, and a shorty deluxe truss rod cover. This is the Hofner logo. The nut is 42mm or 1.65 inch wide. The 12th fret is at 51.5mm or 2.02 inches. Thickness of the first fret 22.8mm or 0.89 inch. The 12th fret is at 23.2mm or 0.91 inch. Thickness of the body plus the pick guard 44.3mm or 1.74 inch. The fingerboard radius is 12 inches. The neck feels comfortable somewhere in between the T new and C profile shapes. A bit of a rough job on the truss rod cavity. It has a two-way adjustable truss rod adjusted by a 4mm Allen wrench. This is the cover that I've shown you before. Shorty deluxe, white on the bottom, black on the top. Slanted pickup ring for the bridge, no pickup ring for the neck. Of course, when I'm in a hurry, there's always an issue. The bolt adjusting the neck pickup was not catching and you couldn't adjust the height of the pickup. I tried different bolts, I tried cutting the spring, but the hole was just too big. I did the only thing I could to put some foam underneath the pickup to push it up. Not the best solution and the pickup is still too low from the strings but at least it's usable. Not too much going on on the back of the shorty, it has the shorty body shape, cut away for a good high fret axis. The output jack is here on the bottom, oval chrome jack plate with a chrome nut. Strap button on the back and a useless one near the neck joint. This is a bolt on construction, Hofner logo on the plate. You got your maple neck, seems to be one piece. There's a small volute near the headstock, made in China. The tuners are not even branded, probably made in China. And the serial number, here's some information. HCT instruments may have a serial number, but this does not provide date information. I'm gonna set and intonate the shorty in E standard with 942 super slinky Ernie Bowles. The way you do it, you first feed all the strings to the bridge and then wrap them around the top of it. Then you put on the bridge. Hey, at least it's light at 2 kilograms or 4.55 pounds. The balance is horrible though and it's evident when I'm playing it. At first I was using a vinyl strap and it was horrible. I had to hold the neck the entire time. The strap button position near the neck joint is absolutely useless. I couldn't tie the strap around the nut so I had to hold the neck the entire time I was playing. <laughs> I tried a thick leather strap but that didn't help too much either. <laughs> Having the time of my life over here. Eventually I got the hang of it and I managed to lay some solid palm muting. I did everything I could in 2 hours, restring, setup and a review. Of course, the customer was late. So I had some time to peacefully check it out now. I see the bridge is leaning a little bit towards the neck. It's probably a design or a construction flaw. 
The three-way switch is too close to the tone pod, rendering both useless. I feel that the neck pickup is a little bit useless on a 24 fret guitar and I would go with the regular shorty and remove one of the pots. Now would be a good time to talk about the price. This costs around $150 and I can understand all the flaws that comes with it for this price. I mean, what could you expect from a Chinese made guitar for this price range? Check out the fingerboard near the nut. Things like that, small quality issues, but overall I was surprised by the way this thing played and sounded. This would have been an amazing guitar if it didn't have the absolutely worst neck dive in the world. I know you can tie a strap around the nut and fix the balance issue, but I didn't have the time to do that. And I think Hofner should have thought about that from the factory, why even include a strap button near the neck joint? If we put that issue aside, if you manage to fix it, it's an interesting guitar, it's a full size guitar, 24 frets, the full scale length 24.7 inches, sounds good, plays good, the neck is comfortable and it costs $150, comes with a bag, it's a great traveler guitar. Would I buy one? Hmm. I love the way it sounds and plays for the money, but I don't know if I can deal with that balance, even with the strap uh, tied around the nut. I usually travel by car everywhere, but if I had this issue with space and I had no other option, no other option available like any other guitar, I guess I would go with a Hofner. I think a headless guitar will do better as a traveler.